Hi, I'm Jordan Hamer, and I'm going to go over the block mechanic from Solomon's Key 1 and 2. Uh, how it works is simple. The player controlling Dana can press X to create a one unit sized block and the unit immediately in front of them, and press X again to destroy it. Blocks cannot be placed on full spots, be it filled with an enemy, a wall, or an item like this key over here. If the player crouches, they can place a block one unit down from them diagonally, and if they jump, they can place one in the air. Um, if they stand under a block, they can jump twice to break it. Uh, when standing on the ledge, if the player times it right, they can place a block two units ahead instead of one, and use it to cross gaps. There is no cap on how many blocks the player can place. Uh, that's about all there is to it for the original Solomon's Key. But its prequel, Fire and Ice, uh, expands on it significantly. Uh, while Dana is now limited to only being able to place blocks one unit down diagonally, they have much more interactivity. If one single block is in front of them, the player can push them, and they will slide until they're hitting something. When a block collides with an enemy, it's destroyed, but if it were to hit a wall, it would not destroy them. Like seen here, blocks can be placed on a wall to connect them to said wall, as well as placed next to each other to make them into bigger multi-unit blocks. These bigger unit blocks cannot be pushed. Uh, block and wall connections can be broken to make the block plummet downwards. This works both with small and big blocks. Blocks also cannot be placed on the floor or in a wall like in previous games, and they also cannot be placed directly on enemies. Fire and Ice also introduces heavier black blocks. These can be pushed by the player, but do not slide until collision, instead only going one unit at a time. They also do not get destroyed when colliding with an enemy, and as you see down here, they cannot be created or destroyed by the player. They can be connected to with regular blocks, but they cannot be connected to each other. The Black Ice blocks also have a unique exception where they have ice physics when pushed on regular blocks. Normally on the floor, they only move one unit, but if pushed on an ice block, they will go past that ice block however many units it takes to either collide or land on floor. As seen here, they go two units. Here they go four. And if I were to push this here, it would go all the way to the other wall. And once this is here, if a black ice block is against a wall, it's the only time one can be climbed. Otherwise, they cannot be and it cannot be pushed out of this spot no matter what the player does. There's no way to move that ice block out of there. Uh, one more feature that the regular blocks have while I'm here is if regular blocks are pushed onto fire, they will melt. But this is not the case for the heavy ice blocks.